Hi everyone, I'm Julie. Today I'm here with the creative design team where we are sharing our back to school projects. For my project today, I decided I was gonna dive in and keep working on my eight and a half by 11 baby album. Now I'm definitely skipping way ahead in this project, but I thought it would be fun to show you how I was able to incorporate really bright photos with this really soft paper that I started to work with. Now I'm not gonna stick to that paper for the entire book, but I kind of want to have the same look and feel. So I decided to pull two paper collection. This one here is the For Always paper pack. And this one here is the Mix-In. So let me show you why I did this. I found very old photos of myself. I figured if I was going to embarrass someone, I might as well embarrass myself and not my kids. What was up with this? <laughs> I have so many pictures back in the day they used to do this double image and these are really bright and I thought okay I'm going to make them black and white or I'm going to make them sepia and they're going to match my baby album and then I thought no you got to keep the blue eyeshadow you got to keep these in color these are extremely bright photos I thought okay how am I going to incorporate this in my baby album to have the same look and feel. Well, let's take a look at what happens when you take these really bright photos and put them on something a little bit more neutral. Now, I have been using the Mix-In and the Cosette paper, and I'm also using this one quite a bit. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna bring a more neutral palette, and then I think I'm gonna feel a bit better about these really bright photos that I'm trying to put into my book. I'm going to pull back my sketchbook here and you can see that I've got a few that have already been tabbed because I am working on that book just not as fast as I thought I would. This is the sketch I decided to work with today and yes I have four photos but I don't think this is going to be a primary photo. I'm going to add these two in flip flaps. So this is going to be the first one right here. It's going to be in a flip flap. And then I'm going to have these photos like so. This is me graduating from college. This is me in grade 11. And I believe this is grade 9. Now I'm missing definitely a few photos. But you know what? They'll probably turn up. And I can add more embarrassing photos here. <laughs> Wow. Okay, let's clear this off. I've gone ahead and I've done all of my embellishments. I did stay true to the Cosette kind of feel of this paper. So I did have to bring in a color that would match the photos and the papers. And I decided to bring in peach as an accent, but I'm still using the same little SVGs that I did throughout the book. And I think it's gonna look really, really great. I'm gonna go ahead and cut everything up and I will take you along my process on how I made these photos work with my album and the papers that I selected. Just a note though, I end up changing this quite a bit, so you're going to want to hang out until the end to see how it all turned out. The tabs here were done in the Mixin papers, so in the Seabrook. And then I did trim down my photos just a little bit and I placed them here on a placeholder. So these are a true 4 by 6 and I'm going to pull the sticker sheet. Now, there's a lot of good stickers on here, although it is meant to be more primarily for weddings, I guess. I was able to find some really good stickers for this layout, like this film strip right here. I think that's going to look really great. And then I thought I would bring in this stamp, and I'm going to stamp right here at the back and at the top, just to ground my clusters a little bit more. I am going to use Seabrook, and I'm going to add my little cushion underneath just to get a good stamp impression. Now, the reason why I brought in Seabrook is twofold. First, it was in the paper collection that I was working with. And then that middle picture that I have has a lot of like tealy kind of blue colors. And I thought that it was a good way to introduce that color and try and match the photos a little bit. So I'm going to stamp right here at the top and you'll see how nicely this grounds the clusters of 
pieces that I'm adding to this page, I did go ahead and I did ink distress all of the cut pieces using espresso ink. And we're going to start right here at the bottom and we're going to build our page. I did bring in my Versamats here just to help with the alignment. I find that's really easy. You put two together and then you know that all of your pieces are aligning from the left side to the right side. Now I am moving this photo close to the edge because I wanted to see more of that pattern paper. And then we're going to bring in all of these cut pieces that I did on my Cricut. We're going to build our clusters, but first let's talk about this title right here. It was cut on my Cricut. I will list the fonts that I use down below. But before I do that, I want to add a little bit of ink blending. Again, the reason why I'm using Seabrook is it's one of the colors in the main paper pack that I'm using. So there's some consistency throughout the book because this is a theme album, I guess you can call it. And also it was an attempt to try and bring in some color around those very bright headshots. Let's get back to the title right here. Now, if you are careful in lifting this off the mat, you will be successful. I did use intricate cardstock when I cut this out. And you can see here that I'm kind of struggling with the width. It might not be totally apparent to you at this point here, but wait until the end and you'll see what I mean. But nevertheless, I kept on keeping on and I am adding all of my little cut pieces. Now for this little sprig here, I decided to add 3D foam dots and it kind of lifts them off the page a tiny little bit and it gives them a little bit more dimension. Now all of those have been put on on the right hand page. And then I was looking for something to add underneath my flip flap. I had placed a piece of white cardstock as a placeholder and I thought, oh, those butterflies would be kind of cute. Wasn't sure. So I'm basically going through the Cosette PML cards and I thought, oh, too bad that's not in the right orientation. That would have been really great for my journaling. And then I landed on this one. And I thought, yes, this is going to work. It's got the same look and feel as the title. This is where I thought I was all done. I'm not sure about you guys, but I sometimes only see problems with the layout when I'm cleaning up. And this was one of those times. But let's go through what I think works. So this definitely works. I pulled out a few titles here and there. I did use my mocha pearls. Those were in my stash from a very long time ago. And right here when I'm showing you the layout, I feel that those butterflies are competing with those red roses on the photo. Let me know what you think. Here I'm going to go through the process of adding my flip flop because that doesn't change. It still works really, really well. So we're going to put this page right here in the page protector and we're going to add this one too. Now I did use two brand new ones and I am moving these further down into my album. So I thought that I would start with two fresh pages and I'm going to add this flip flap right on top. Now a lot of people don't like the fact that you can see the plastic on the top of your page protector. It doesn't really bother me, but if it does, just take out your little trimmer and go right close to the edge of the adhesive and trim that off. You trim off like maybe a quarter of an inch of the plastic so you don't see as much of it and it might be a solution for you. I know that for me, I love the ease of putting down these little flip flaps and uh, it doesn't bother me that I see it on the top of my page protector. So I'm going to put this down and we're going to talk about how I decided to change a few things. So hang tight. Does this happen to you when you're starting to clean up your crafty mess? You look at your layout and you're like, I don't think this is right. The color is really competing with the red roses on this page and I just didn't like that too much. And also my title here really had to squish it into place because I cut it too big initially. So I thought, you know what? It's taken me this long to do these layouts. I might as well start over. The other thing that 
kind of bothered me. Yes, these photos are bright. When I scan these, I use the automatic setting on my scanning program and I felt that the colors were a little bit off. They were bright, but you know, if you can see here, I redid that photo and you know, my face is not so washed out. Sometimes don't take the automatic setting. This one here is a really good example. Like my hair looks almost burgundy. So I used my eyeballs to adjust some of the settings and I think that this turned out a little bit better. Again, for this one right here, it was really dark. So I went back in, I rescanned the photo and I used the manual setting instead of the automatic setting. The other thing that I didn't like was the color that I chose for my embellishment and my title. It was really squishy. I was trying to make it fit on this page and it really didn't work out. So yes, I went ahead and I recut all of my Cricut pieces. I did use white glitter for the base of the butterfly. Kept the same color at the top right here. I like that. And we're going to add the overlay, which is black. And when I add this to the page, or when I put this right beside the page, you'll see that it's not competing with the photo as much. This color, to me, was. So that might just be me, but let me know what you think. I decided that it was worth my time to cut everything out and change up a few little things. This is another thing that I changed. I'd use the mix-in paper to cut my little sprig right here. The color is a little bit closer to the photo. And um, we're going to do some surgery on this layout. So I have to take my photo my embellishments and that bottom piece, I have to take it off. I'm not going to be able to save the base page, but I'm okay with that. I'm not a fan of redoing layouts, but I think this one kind of had to be redone. So we're going to go ahead here and we're going to assemble our Cricut pieces because I didn't show you that at the beginning. And when you layer up this little butterfly, especially if you're using glitter paper, you're going to need liquid glue because otherwise it's not going to stick to the glitter. I'm sure you know that. And then we're going to add our tiny little butterfly. And I will reach out for my precision glue here so that I can get it everywhere. So you can see that I have it on all of the butterfly because again, it's going on glitter paper here. And I just want to make sure that it really adheres together. I also like to use a block or something heavy to kind of hold it in place while it's gluing. And, and now I'm going to do the little flowers. So the little flowers come in three pieces. So we're going to adhere the flower portions together. And then I'm going to add a little bit of ink to the sprigs and the base of those flowers before I add the top part to it and you'll see here in a moment. So I'm going to start off with toffee and I'm just rubbing it ever so lightly on the sprig. It just helps with the definition of this piece. I'm going to do that for all three of them. So for these two little sprigs right here, it just gives it a little bit more present on the layout. And then I'm going to move on to espresso ink and I'm just going to touch the tip of these sprigs. So not all over them, but just the very tip of each one of them. I'm going to do the same here for the little tags. So pretty much all of the cut pieces were ink distress with espresso. And uh, I just had to remember to do all of those steps again. So here I'm showing you that I'm curling up those little sprigs just with the back of my bone folder. And I'm going very gently, especially for this piece because it's pattern paper. This one is not as delicate because it's cardstock, but still go at it really gently. And I'm not holding it down too, too much. Like I'm, as I'm pulling back, I'm not holding it because it will rip. So basically just rub the backside and you get a nice little texture to it. We're gonna come back with espresso ink. I'm gonna squish that into the lid and we're going to add tiny little splatters to those cut pieces. I'm just going to move that layout out of the way. I'm going to add a little bit of water 
and I'm going to take my tiny little brush, and I know you've heard me say this before, the smaller the brush, the smaller the splatter. I also like to use something when I'm tapping, so here I'm using my bone folder, and again it gives just really tiny little splatters. I don't want these to overwhelm the pieces, I just want them to accentuate. All right, the moment of truth, we are going to lift that photo and this back piece or the bottom piece I should say. So I'm going to start right here with the title and this should be a testament to Precision Glue. No, this is not a sponsored video but it was hard to take off that little M that was overlapping my pattern paper right here. I'm going to go in and try and remove the pattern paper and you'll see that I still have a little bit of black from the M and I was just using a little bit of precision glue so that glue is quite strong. Do not underestimate it. And here I'm lifting my little butterfly I did use dots, so foam dots are another adhesive that are really nice and strong, and it is ripping some of the pattern paper and some of the cardstock right here, but I think I can save this little guy. I have a little box that I put in all of my extra pieces because this is a theme album, so I'm going to save that for later, and I did damage that piece but you know what because it's distressed it doesn't look like it's damaged but it doesn't matter the butterfly the new butterfly is going to go right on top so I might be able to save these I'll put them aside right here and I will start lifting all of these little cut pieces these ones came off really nicely but um, I had to take my time this one here was a little tricky and it was kind of ripping everything. It literally ripped all of that tag and uh, that's why I kind of anticipated that that would happen. So I did cut myself another tag. I know I can save this little bow so we'll use that for later. This little guy is coming off nicely so we're going to save that one. And now for the bottom. All right, let's see what we can do here. I know I can lift the pattern paper. That's easy enough because I didn't go crazy on the adhesive, but this is a sticker. So, all right, let's start with this one right here. Let's take this piece off with the photo. I know that this one will come off. I'm just using my Cricut spatula here to lift all of those pieces. And I think that I'll be successful. Let's pull that off. All right, so success, that was saved. I'm still gonna have to address that little piece of black that's still bothering me. But for this right here, you know what? The best thing to do is to trim it off. So I brought back my little trimmer here, my guillotine trimmer, and I'm gonna make sure that it's nice and flush with the edge of that sticker. And very carefully, I'm going to cut that piece off. That looks good. For this piece right here, and I knew that that was going to happen, I'm not going to be able to save any of that. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to trim the bottom off. So I'm making sure that I'm lining it up very close to the edge. And that was the easiest way to save this piece. I know that I don't have any more stickers, but I want to reuse this, right? Because it's part of my layout. Now to address this here. I know it's not a lot and I could probably get away with it. I'm going to use a little bit of undo. I don't use undo a lot because this product is no longer available here in Canada so I only pull it out when I absolutely need it. And you can see here that I'm not using a lot. I'm just using a tiny little bit. And if you let it soak in, you can peel off pretty much anything. So this was tedious, but everything came off. So I'm pretty happy about that. I was able to save the photo, the pattern paper, and I can move on to the assembly of my right hand page. So I'm going to line this up. So I'm making sure that both of my base pages are lined up together so that I can line up everything. 
and I'm going to come back and do my background. So the fun thing about knowing what you did is that you know exactly where to do your ink blending and your stamping and you can move right along to the assembly. So again, I'm lining up my two pages and I'm going to adhere down this piece right here. And you can't tell, even though there's a little bit of, you know, thickness from the previous cardstock, you really can't tell. We're going to add that butterfly that's going to camouflage that little rib piece out of that paper. But I'm really glad I changed them. Those peach butterflies, although super cute, they did not match this layout. I'm going to add my title right here and I did change the orientation only because I wanted to cut it a little bit bigger. This font is very dainty and if you can cut it a little bit bigger you'll have better success with it definitely. For my little butterflies I will shape them so I'm using again my bone folder and I'm really rubbing gently back onto the wings because this is glitter paper. It tends to be a little bit harder to shape them, but if you go at it gently, you will be successful. So I'm going to pull back on all of the little wings and then I'm going to pinch it right here in the center. And it just gives it a little bit more movement. So we're going to start adding our embellishments back. But first I want to add my little tag. Now this is a trick that I've learned from Janice. You cut your tag and you extend it below whatever pattern paper you have and it looks like it's a continuous tag so I really like the way that that turned out. I'm going to rebuild my cluster here pretty much the way it was before. This way if there's any imperfections from what I've pulled off I can hide it with these pieces because they are exactly the same pieces the same size. I am adding a little bit of foam dots under those little sprigs this one here didn't line up exactly the same way. It kind of covers my little sticker, but you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm going to add my little butterfly here with a couple of foam dots. And then I'm going to flip this over before I start adhering down the other butterflies. I want to make sure that I'm giving myself enough room for my title. Now the problem with my title was that I squished it onto the page and I wasn't really happy with it. So I'm going to pull out my little T ruler here and I'm going to start with the word school and I want to make sure that those letters are not on top of the pattern paper. And then for the word memories, I'm going to line that up with the top of the pattern paper and then I'm going to add that other piece. And you'll see what I mean where previously my R and my I were overlapping. Now it wasn't that much of a big deal, but if I'm going to take the time to redo it, I want to make sure that I do it right and I align my word the way it was meant to be aligned. So see here the R is almost touching the I, but not touching and everything is nice and straight. I'm going to add my little dot on my I and I'm happy with this. I love that the orientation gave me the opportunity to make my title a tiny little bit bigger. So I'm going to go ahead here and I am going to add all of my butterflies. So what do you think? Was it worth the effort? I like the way it turned out. I love that my title is bigger. It's not squished together. I love that my butterflies and flowers are no longer competing with those red roses. And I also like that I took the time to rescan my pictures and they're not as bright. Now we can definitely put this back in the page protector. This one here, I didn't change anything, so it should slide right in. Let me bring back these little flowers right here. I do feel that it, they were competing against those red roses. I'm glad I took the time to neutralize these pages. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Don't forget this is a video collaboration with the creative design team. I will have all of their videos linked in a playlist at the end right here. That's it for me today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.